Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a sci-fi drama film called The Day of the Triffids. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Dr. Bill Mazin is a biotech engineer at a research company called Trifoil. He specializes in a tall carnivorous plant called the Triffids. The plant contains an oil that is an alternative to fossil fuel. Over the past 30 years, Triffids have become man's best friend and have helped eradicate global warming. But many do not know that the carnivorous plant is a real danger to humans if left unattended. 30 years ago, Mazin's mother, who was also a researcher, was killed by a triffid. Mazin knows that, if necessary, triffids will feed on humans. Its branches are extremely venomous and can blind a person in only seconds. The breeding of the plant is licensed and done away from cities. When a plant shows an abnormality, Mazin is called in to check on it. While he is at it, the branches grip his arm and his associate has to tase them away. Meanwhile, an anti-trifoil activist breaches the premises and enters the orchard where all the male triffids are kept. The security cameras alert the officials who send backup to get the men out safely. Mazin and his colleague, Lucy, run to the orchard and try to calm the man. Suddenly, a triffid branch attacks Mazin's eyes but misses. Backup arrives and gets everyone out safely, but Mazin is poisoned by a minor cut. Lucy rushes him to the hospital in London. After giving Mazin an anti-venom, the doctor bandages his eyes and asks him to rest for 24 hours. In the meantime, the entire world is waiting for a meteor shower that is about to take place at night. A reporter named Joe Clayton interviews an astrophysicist. According to him, the sun will release an unbelievably vast explosion of gas and nuclear fire, making it seem like fireworks in the sky. Yet, it is proven that the fireworks won't do any harm to humans or the Earth. He asks the public to enjoy the once-in-a-lifetime experience to their best. A few hours later, when it gets dark in London, the fireworks begin. Joe broadcasts it live from the heart of London. Everyone in the world watches the burning sky in awe. Lucy feels bad for Mazin that he couldn't experience such a unique phenomenon. Passengers of an airplane flying above London also witness the fireworks and are mesmerized by them. Among the passengers is a man named Torrance, who doesn't appear to care about the natural fireworks. He simply sleeps with an eye mask while others get up from their seats to look outside. A few minutes into the fireworks, a blinding bright light flashes on the earth. Because of it, all the TVs and radios lose signal. The light is so bright that people can hardly keep their eyes open. A while after everything ends, Mazin wakes up on the hospital bed, with his eyes still bandaged. Outside, everyone is panicking because the light has caused all of them to lose their eyesight. A confused Mazin opens the bandages from his eyes and can see clearly. Back on the airplane, Torrance wakes up and realizes what is going on. The plane is about to crash because even the pilots have also gone blind. Amidst the chaos, he collects all the life jackets, blows them up, and uses them to keep himself safe in the bathroom. The plane crashes near a hospital in London. All passengers die in the crash, but Torrance somehow survives with only minor injuries. After coming out of the wreckage, he smiles at the victory, not showing any remorse at the death of the others. Meanwhile, Mazin tries to find the doctor in the crowd, but even the doctor is blind and has no idea what is going on. When he registers that there is going to be a power outage soon, he runs back to the lab to keep the triffids confined. If the plants get out of the lab somehow, they will breed at an exponential rate and kill everyone on Earth. Somewhere else, the reporter, Joe Clayton, wakes up in the middle of the ruins of a building. Unlike most, she still has her eyesight. Joe makes it to the streets and realizes what is going on. She tries asking for help, but a blind policeman holds her hostage, urging her to take him home. Before he can do any harm, Mazin saves her. They plan to go to the White Hall together to find out what exactly is going on. Somewhere else, Torrance takes full advantage of the situation and steals everything he can from the stores. He also takes a policeman's gun for protection and makes his way to a hotel. Back on the Triffid farm, everyone including Lucy has lost their eyesight. The activist, who is confined in a room, however, can still see. 
Taking advantage of the situation, he opens the doors to the orchard and lets the triffids free. The following morning, Joe and Mazin reach Whitehall, but see that a crowd of blind people has gathered in front of it. They try communicating with the blind guards, who start to shoot at each other. Following that, the two drive to the Triffid farm. When they reach it, the lab is in ruins, with dead bodies of the workers lying everywhere. Mazin finally registers the seriousness of the situation, now that the Triffids have escaped. They go to his lab and retrieve a recorder that contains the Triffids' noise. Mazin has been recording the noise over the years, and has theorized that the plants are communicating with each other. Following that, they drive to Joe's father's house to make sure he is safe. However, when they reach there, he has already been killed and is being pulled away by the branches of a triffid. With no way out, the duo goes to a radio station and broadcasts the news about the dangerous plant. They warn all the listeners with sight to help the others get to a safe place. Somewhere else, Torrance reaches the current prime minister's office and asks his secretary about his whereabouts. After finding out that the government has collapsed, he sets off to look for weapons, aiming to become the people's next leader. In the morning, Mazin sees flare signals coming from the other part of the city. He realizes that there are more people like them, who have probably formed a community. When the duo finally reaches the building where all the survivors have gathered, they see that the officials are not allowing blind people to enter the premises. They are received by Michelle Beadley, an employee of the home office and the chief of the survivor's organization. Currently, the organization is working on providing food and shelter to the affected people, but is oblivious to the problem of the Triffids. When Mazin tells them about the real danger, Michelle asks him for his expert advice. A clip shows us that the plants have taken over the railway tracks and will soon be in the streets of London. Michelle wants to bring the little community of sighted people to a safe place and start anew, leaving the blind to die. Mazin and Joe do not support her idea, so they decide not to work with her. Out in the streets, a sighted man named Coker is gathering the blind people and is organizing a search party for food and water to help them. He has become the leader of the group. Torrance sees that Coker is in power and asks to join his team. They plan to raid the building with sighted people to hold them hostage and force them to help the blind. Meanwhile, Mazin plans to go to his father, who lives in the countryside. His father is also a bioengineer and a researcher on triffids. Mazin believes that with his research, they can find a way to contain the plants. However, before they leave, they are attacked by Coker and his group and are taken hostage. Coker handcuffs each sighted person to a blind one and gives them the responsibility to help them. His heart is in the right place, but he is oblivious to the dangers of the Triffids. Following that, they are taken to a warehouse to collect food and supplies, but trouble arises when the warehouse happens to be infested by Triffids. Joe is caught in one of the branches, but Mazin saves her. Coker realizes that Mazin was right about the Triffids. He asks Torrance to provide Mason with everything he needs to get rid of the problem. But since Torrance wants to be the leader, he plans to betray Coker. When Joe is alone, he asks her to broadcast another message on the radio, asking everyone to come to London for aid. In reality, he wants to gather as many people as possible to rule over them. Unaware of his true motives, she agrees to do as he says. Meanwhile, his people take Coker and Mazin hostage, kicking them out of authority. They are taken to a forest by Torrance's henchmen, but are soon attacked by Triffids. The plants kill all of Torrance's men, and only Mazin and Coker come out of the forest alive. The next morning, they reach a nearby church, where Mazin is treated for his injuries. The church is run by the head nun, who claims that they are immune to Triffid attacks. Mazin believes there is something she is hiding. When Mazin gets better, he leaves to look for his father's place, while Coker stays back in the church. On his way, Mazin sees several bodies of nuns placed on crosses set as a sacrifice to keep Triffids away. It turns out that the head nun has been sacrificing people to keep the church safe. He returns to the church and reveals the truth to its people. They kick the nun out of the place and thank Mazin for his help. Following that, he continues the journey to his father's house, which is still a mile away. In the meantime, Joe finds Mazin's tape recorder that was found in an attack zone. She realizes that Torrance has done something to Coker and Mazin to become the leader. In her next radio broadcast, she tells the people that London is not safer than the place they already live in, hence they should stay put wherever they are. This angers Torrance and he sends his men to kill her. 
Joe manages to somehow escape the radio tower and runs to the infested part of the city. The henchmen try to catch her, but are unsuccessful. They believe she can never survive among the Triffids and quit looking for her. Joe is attacked by an army of the plants, but luckily, she finds a working vehicle and drives away. She is also driving to Mazin's father's place, having known where he lives. Meanwhile, Mazin reaches a small town where everyone has died because of a Triffid attack, except for two little girls named Susan and Imogen. At first, they fire at him, believing he is a robber, but stop when Mazin explains he just needs a vehicle to drive to his father's place. The girls have been living on their own since their parents died and need an adult to take care of them. Mazin includes them in the mission, and the three set out to look for his father. After driving for a few hours, they are stopped by a vehicle. Coincidentally, Mazin's father gets out of the vehicle and asks them to join him. They drive to his house in the middle of the woods that is fenced in by electrocuted wires. On going in, Mazin is shocked to see Joe. The two reunite, relieved that they are alive. For a few minutes, they forget the troubles of the outside world and slow dance together. Back in London, Torrance is tense because he has no means to save the people he has gathered. He knows the only person who can stop the plants is Mazin. Meanwhile, Mazin's father already has an elaborate plan to get rid of the Triffids. He has been breeding a female Triffid that is genetically modified to sterilize the pollen from a male Triffid. If these kinds of Triffids are spread all around, they will make the entire population infertile and eventually all of them will die out. But he needs the pollen from a male Triffid for the experiment to be completed. Mazin sets out to hunt a male Triffid and Susan comes with him. They are in a warehouse trying to find one. Mazin uses his mother's recordings of the Triffid noise to attract the plant. Susan is attacked by the plant that almost pulls her away before Mazin jumps on it and hits it repeatedly. They bring its branch back to the house and start the experiment. That night, Torrance gets his hands on Mazin's report and finds out his father's address. They quickly leave for the countryside to get them. Back in the house, a helicopter flies above, distributing pamphlets everywhere. Through the pamphlets, the group is informed about a survivor's colony on the Isle of Wight, where people are providing food and water to everyone. After defeating the Triffids, Mazin and the group plan to move there. His father is feeding the female Triffids as usual, but this time, he listens to the Triffid voice recording while doing so. The noise makes the Triffid aggressive and it attacks the old man. Mazin comes to save his father and shoots the Triffid dead. But it is too late because he is already poisoned by the plant's sting. Now, since the plant is dead, they have no way to fight back against the Triffids. They cremate his father's dead body at night and decide to leave for Isle of Wight the following morning. While going through the old stuff at the house, Mazin finds a black mask that he remembers wearing the day his mother died. He doesn't remember much about that day, but he knows that he was saved by a trivial group in an African jungle who knew how to fight Triffids. The next morning, Torrance and his men arrive at the house and take everyone hostage. He asks Mazin for a way to fight the Triffids, but even he has no ideas left. An enraged Torrance orders him to come up with a plan, one way or the other, or he will kill the girls. Mazin knows there is no way to stop the Triffids now. Instead, he prioritizes getting everyone out of the house safely. For that, he plans to use the Triffid recording to attract the plants. When Torrance and his people are busy fighting them, the group will have a chance to escape. That night, the house is surrounded by Triffids, just as Mazin had planned. Torrance realizes that Mazin was behind all of this and asks his right-hand man, Troy, to kill the girls. Troy, however, has had enough of his boss and doesn't want to kill the little girls. He sides with Mazin and the team and protects them. Soon, the Triffids take over them and kill all of Torrance's people. The others try to run away, but since the house is surrounded, they are trapped. In the moment of panic, Mazin remembers the day his mother died. A man from the trivial group had made Mazin wear the mask and poured Triffid venom around his eyes. The venom tricked the plants into thinking he was one of them. He does the same with everyone and carefully steps outside the house. Lo and behold, the plants do not attack the group. Just then, Torrance comes outside and starts firing at them. He is caught in Triffid branches and killed while the group escapes safely. In the last scene, they are on their way to the Isle of Wight to start a new life and fight back against the Triffids with the knowledge they have gathered. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.